call your attention to the book of Acts. Acts, the 20th chapter. Look with me there at verse 7. Again, that is Acts, the 20th chapter. We'll commence reading at verse 7. And when you found it, say, Man. And there you'll find these words. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down. And fell on him, and embracing him, said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, he had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while, even to break of day. So he departed. And our last and final verse, verse 12, reads, And they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comforted. We ask God, if he would, add other blessing to the reading, the hearers, but especially to the doers of his word. As you take your seats, if you're not too mean this morning and you don't mind helping me preach for these next few moments, look over at the person who sat next to you, take him or her by the hand, look them in the eye, and if you recognize them as a person that owes you some money, this is a fine time to get it. <laughs> but look at that neighbor eyeball to eyeball and say to them these words with a real loud voice. Say, neighbor, neighbor. your fall, fall. wasn't fatal. fatal. That's what I'm going to talk to you about. <laughs> your fall was not fatal. I would that you pray with us and pray for us as we endeavor to preach this message as the Lord would see fit. Your fall was not fatal. My brothers and sisters, by the clock on the wall, we must understand and recognize that we are living in the last in evil days, we are living in perilous times. We're living in a day and in an age where right is becoming wrong and wrong is becoming right. We're living in a time where men are becoming women and women are becoming men. We live in a day and in an age where children are killing their parents and parents are killing their children. I submit to you this morning, Fairfield, that we are living in a time of great chaos, a time of confusion and calamity. When we turn on the news, we see stories of people young and old dying innocent deaths every day. We see people's homes being burglarized, cars being stolen. It feels and it seems as if there's no safety in this world. It seems that we are a man terrified to go out of our own front doors because of fear of what could or might happen to us. It's a sad day when we leave our homes in the mornings to go to work or to school and don't know if we'll return back home. 
But I'm reminded of the scripture where it said, The name of the Lord. It is a strong tower. The righteous can run therein and be safe. My brothers and sisters, this day in which we live in is a day, amen, that is fearful. We live in a day of, amen, a, a fearful, a fretful and fatal society. It's fearful. It's so, it's so, so fearful because when we go to sleep at night, we don't know if something will happen next door to us or if someone will even, amen, drive by our houses. We, we just don't know. When we look at the news, we see a lot of stories. We see a lot of stories that have fatal endings. When we look at the story of a young man, Trayvon Martin, there in Florida, his story had a fatal ending. A young man walking home from the convenience store with a bag of Skittles and an Arizona tea looked suspicious because he had on a hoodie. And the, the, a man, the, the patrol shot him and got off. Trayvon's story had a fatal ending. We look, we look there in Ferguson, Missouri, Mike Brown, the young man who was suspected to be somewhere doing something at the wrong time. Officer shot and killed him there in his own apartment complex. Mike Brown's story had a fatal ending. Y'all going to pray with me after a while. We, we see Eric Gardner there in the state of New York was choked by the police officer telling him he could not breathe and he was later killed by that police officer because he could not breathe. Eric's story had a fatal ending. We see here recently a man, Freddie Gray, in the city of Baltimore whose a man's spinal cord was severed by the police officer in the paddy wagon. He later died in the hospital. Amen. Freddie's story had a fatal ending. Well, what does fatal mean? Fatal means capable of causing or causing death. Fatal can mean capable of ruin or causing disaster. All of these stories plus more that I just named all had a fatal ending. But I venture to say there's many stories sitting in this room who did not make it to the 10 o'clock news. I wish I had a witness in here. Your, your story didn't make it to ABC or CNN. Your story did not make it to Channel 2 or Fox 5. And you know why your story didn't make it? Because it wasn't it wasn't fatal. And you know how I know your story wasn't fatal? Because I'm looking at you. You're sitting in here right now. You're dressed up. You're looking good. You're smelling good. You might not feel good, but you're here. And that lets me know that your story didn't have a, a fatal ending. The songwriter said a few years ago, tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases People are slipping away. The economy is down. People can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Because guess what? It could have been me. I wish I had a witness in here. Outdoors, with no food, with no clothes left alone without a friend or just another number with a tragic or fatal end. But here's the shouting point. He didn't see fit. Y'all gonna hit me after a while to let none of these things be. But every day by his power, he keeps on keeping me. I just wonder, is there anybody else in here besides me that want to tell him thank you? I may not have everything that I want, but God, I thank you. 
I may not drive the car I want to drive, but I got one. God, I, I thank you. I may not live in a mansion on a hill, but I got a roof over my head. God, I thank you. I may not have millions in the bank, but when I pay my bills, I can pay them on time with money left in my pocket. God, I I thank you. So we find that a lot of stories end fatally. We find that a lot of stories have a tragic ending. Believe it or not, brothers and sisters, there are some people who have died with the same illness you suffering with right now. There are some people who have been in car accidents as bad as or if not worse than the one you were in and you still here. There are some people who've been evicted out of their houses, who had their car repossessed who's lost their job and they still struggling. They still can't find their way. But you lost your job three years ago and you done got a new house and a new car. I wish I had somebody to talk to me in here. You got money in your pocket. You, the Lord has been taking care of you. I'm going to the text after I say this. The old saints would say, be not dismayed. Whatever betides, for surely the Lord will take care of you. As I scurry to the text, we find the apostle Paul. Paul, in this 20th chapter of Acts, was on his third and final missionary journey. Paul was on his way to Jerusalem. He wanted to get there by today, which was the Feast of Pentecost, because he had already missed the Feast of the Passover. So Paul left Ephesus, and he left Ephesus because of some unruly people. He left Ephesus because of this man by the name of Demetrius. Demetrius was a craftsman. He was a silversmith. He made this idol god by the name of Diana. And the Ephesians worshipped this idol. And one day, Demetrius thought about that thing. He said, now here, this preacher is in our town messing with our money. Now, you can sit there like you ain't never had nobody try to mess with your money if you want to. But... Let somebody try to interrupt your flow of income. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Let somebody owe you some money. You're going to go looking for them. Everything is going to stop when your money is involved. So the Bible says Demetrius called all the other craftsmen together. He said, now look, there's this preaching town, and he's telling and persuading people that there's only one true and living God. He said, we've got to stop him. He must be stopped because we're going to lose business because they're going to start believing what he's saying. So he got all of them on his side. And the Bible says that they dragged two of Paul's companions in the amphitheater. And they started chanting and yelling, great is the goddess of Diana, of a man of Ephesus. And the Bible says they chanted and yelled this for two hours. The Bible even points out that there was great confusion in the city. There were people that had come into the amphitheater that didn't even know why they were there. They were just there following the crowd. Can I stick a pen right there and let you know, don't always follow the crowd. Just because everybody else is doing it don't mean you have to do it. Just because they bills ain't getting paid don't mean that yours ain't getting paid. Maybe they need to trust God a little bit. So he said, they were in the amphitheater yelling and chanting, great is the goddess Diana of the Ephesians. And the ruler, the leader came and said, now 
Why have y'all drugged these two men in here? Uh -huh. They haven't robbed the temple. They haven't done anything out of order. Why are you bothering and picking on these two men? He looked at Demetrius and told Demetrius and the other craftsmen, if you want, amen, if you have a case against Paul, then the courts are open. You can take Paul and state your claim. Then the Bible says that after he had spoken this, they dismiss. So here in the 20th chapter, we find Paul leaving Ephesus after the uproar. Paul got out of town and he headed to Macedonia. He went to Macedonia, then down to Greece. And he stayed in Greece for three months. And then when Paul got ready to head back, he was going to go through a man Syria. But the Bible says that the Jews had plotted to kill Paul. So Paul went back through Macedonia and he stopped in Troas where he stayed for a week. And here is where we find the setting of our text. The Bible says it was on the first day of the week, which means it was on Sunday. The Bible says that they gathered in the upper room. And it says that Paul began to preach. The Bible says that Paul long preached. In other words, Paul was long-winded, as we would say. But Paul knew that this was probably the last time he would see these people in Troas. So he said, I'm going to tell you everything I've got to say now just in case I don't see you anymore. So the Bible says that Paul preached this sermon, and theologians suggest that this sermon was about six to ten hours long. I'm going to hurry up and bring mine to a close, but Paul's message was about six to ten hours long. He said that he broke bread. In other words, Paul served the Lord's Supper. Because it said that whenever the saints gathered, they always observed the death of our Lord. So here it is, my brothers and sisters, Paul is preaching. And there's a young man that shows up by the name of Eutychus. The Greek text says that he was a Neoneus, which means he was between 24 and 40 years old. Now scripture tells us that ne a man Utica sat in the window of the room. Right. Now the question rises, why did Utica sit in the window? Right. Maybe, perhaps, Utica sat in the window for there were, as the text said, many lights in the room. Uh -huh. Now, Luke, Dr. Luke, the physician, was a disciple of Paul, and he wrote the book of Acts. And Luke points out the fact that there were lights in the room because people thought that when they gathered, they were doing some type of lewd or demonic practices. So he points out the fact that when there were lights in the room, we weren't doing anything crazy, but we were serving and praising the Lord. So perhaps Utica sat in the window for ventilation. Maybe he sat in the window to get a man some fresh air so that the smoke from the lights would not suffocate him. Or perhaps Utica sat in the window because he got to church late. Theologians suggest that Utica was a servant, so perhaps he had been working late all day. He had been working late and he got off work, but he made up in his mind, I don't care how late I get off. I don't care how long I work. I don't care how tired I am, I'm going to church. I wonder, is there anybody else in here that has that same attitude? I don't care what kind of week I've had. I don't care how I feel in my body. No matter what's going on, I'm going to find my way to church. If I have to get there late and I don't get my normal seat, I'm going to church. So the Bible says that Utica found himself in a window, perhaps because he was late and there were no more seats. Right. Or maybe Utica had to sit in this window because he got to church on time, but you know how we do. Yeah. We put our purse, our Bibles, 
our cell phones, our scarves in the seat next to us saying this seat is for sister so-and-so. You can't sit right. I'm not talking about fat fee. I'm talking about churches in Atlanta. You can't sit right here because somebody's sitting here. So you look at sit. I'll just sit myself in the window. So Eutychus sits in the window and Paul is preaching. And the Bible says that Eutychus was overcome with sleep. Now, don't you think that if Eutychus knew he was sleepy and tired, he wouldn't have sat in, a, he wouldn't have sat in the window? If, if, if Eutychus was like some of us that come to church with the intention of going to sleep, I'm not, I'm not talking about nobody in here. Um, but if he had the intention of going to sleep, he wouldn't have sat in the window. But the Bible says that he was sunken. He was come over with a deep sleep. And while Paul was preaching, Eutychus fell from the third loft and was taken up dead. Historians suggest to us that this fall was orchestrated or caused by the devil. You, 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 you know how it is. You know how it is when you're in church. And the devil will creep up in your mind and have you thinking thoughts that you should not think. You, you, you know how it is when, when you're sitting right here in church and somebody walk in that you just cannot stand and the devil will start saying stuff in your mind, having you thinking false. You somewhere else. You're not even in church no more. My brothers and sisters, I've come to tell you, you're falling right in church. I wish I had a witness in here. You, 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 you're falling in church you can be in church singing in the choir playing the instruments ushering around the walls amen sunday after sunday faithful in sunday school faithful in bible study faithful to rehearsals and meetings but you ain't living worth nothing saturday i wish i had a witness in here you you dress up in Sunday clothes. You put on your Sunday face. You put on your Sunday voice. You put on your Sunday persona. But when Sunday is over, when Sunday afternoon hit, not even Sunday night, but when you get in your house and pull your clothes off, you forget all about your falling. Bible says, Eutychus fell from the third loft and was taken up dead. The Bible says that Paul went down. It didn't say that Paul sent Luke. Luke was there because if you notice the text, he said we and us, which suggests to us that Paul was there with Luke. Paul didn't, amen, say to Luke, go check on the boy and see if he's all right. I'm going to keep preaching, but the Bible says Paul stopped his message and went down where the boy was and fell on him and embraced him. What that mean, but that simply means is Paul made a physical connection. Paul put his body against the boy's body so that the power of God in Paul could connect Y'all ain't going to pray with him here. That he could connect with the spirit of this boy. I imagine, I imagine Paul said, don't nobody else need to go down. Don't nobody, don't nobody else need to go down. I'm going to stop my message. I'm going to stop preaching to go see about him myself because, see, I've been where he is. I wish I had a witness in there. I've been right where that boy is. You remember that day on the Damascus Road? When I was headed to preach and persecute and lock up and kill folks for preaching Jesus and a light shined from heaven and knocked me and I fell. I 
fell off of my donkey. Paul said, I'm going to go where, because I know where he is. I've been where he is. Brothers and sisters, don't be so quick to pray for folks if you don't know what they're going through. If you ain't never been through what they're going through, you stay away from them. Let somebody who know what it feels like to be down. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me here. Let, let somebody, if you ain't never went, amen, through a divorce, you can't give nobody advice on a divorce. If you ain't never been married, you can't tell nobody how to be a good wife. Stay in your place. Paul said, I'm going down. This is the same, the same Paul that said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. Paul had the power of God who raised Jesus from the dead down on the inside of him. And the Bible says that if the spirit of him that raised Christ dwell in you, he shall quicken your mortal bodies. So the Bible says Paul went down. He laid on him. He embraced him. And then he turned around and said, trouble not yourselves. For his life is in him. Now, the theologians suggest that the boy was dead. Could you imagine falling from three stories to the ground? You... You, you, you bound to die. But Paul, when he embraced him, he said, trouble not yourself. His life is in him. In other words, Paul was talking to two sets of people. I could imagine that Eutychus' family was there and they were sad in their spirit. They had saw their loved one come to church and die. Uh -huh. Who wants to come to church and die? Can I stick a pin right there and tell you, don't spend all of your life coming to church. Don't spend all of your time in church and then die. Yeah, I know what I said because the Bible says the wedges of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So if you just come into church out of routine, y'all ain't going to talk to me here. If you just come into church because mama told you, if you just coming out of tradition, but you hadn't received the gift of God, you shall surely. So I imagine his family was sad. They started getting on Facebook and Twitter saying, pray for our family. My cousin Eutychus came to church and died. More information forthcoming. Pray for us. Yeah, y'all know how we get. Soon as something happened, person ain't even cold yet, and we already telling folks that they done die. We don't know what God can do in the next fleeting moments, and that's why Paul said, trouble not yourself. Don't get sad. Don't get despondent for his life. Is in it? So Paul said that to encourage the family. We just going to imagine that the family was there. And Paul said, don't trouble yourself. Don't get sad. But then he said it to this other group of folks. The ones that started talking about Eutychus. Now this boy going to come to church and sit in a window. What kind of fool is he? Why would you sit in the window and it's a wide open window knowing you can fall? This boy was crazy. He should have died. He should have died. Matter of fact, let me call Mary. Can you believe this boy came to church, sat in the window, fell out, and died? Now this preacher down here talking about trouble, not your sin. This boy's dead. I don't know. He's dead. Okay. Let me bring it home. Eutychus fell out of a three-story window. He fell from three stories. Well, if you can't relate to that story, I fell about three years ago. And some of y'all were in here 
calling folks. Can you believe that boy that preach? That boy that's been singing and running behind, bitten all these years, he doesn't fail. I don't know what they hollering for. I don't know what they talking about trouble. Now, this boy is dead. It's over. It's over. He ain't coming back. He, he's gone. I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, don't count me out. So Eutychus failed. And don't you sit in here pompous paws and pies like you ain't never failed. The only difference between my fall and you because fall didn't nobody hear or see yours. But you did fall. So Paul embraced him. He told the people, trouble not yourself. He's alive. He's still in it. Uh -huh. And after Paul had said this, he didn't do nothing else. Uh -huh. Wasn't nothing else that needed to be done. Scripture said Paul went back upstairs right. and kept on preaching. Right. My brothers and sisters, I've come to tell you, when you put it in the Lord's hands, ain't nothing else you need to do. Carry on what you were doing. Go on with your life. Because when you put it in the Lord's hands, he can handle it. Tell your neighbor, put it all in his hands. So as I hurry to a close, number one, we find in verse seven and eight that there was a place. The Bible tells us that they were gathered in the upper chamber. And I've come to tell you tonight that you can be in the right place right. Yes, sir. at the right time yeah. and still capable of falling. Right. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're singing in the choir stand, yeah. you can fall. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're preaching in the pulpit, yeah. you can fall. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're serving on the usher board or the deacon board, uh -huh. you too can still uh, fall. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 and 12, wherefore let a man that thinketh he stand, take heed lest he fall. But then he goes on to say in the 13th verse, they have no temptation taking you but which is common to man. But God is faithful. Do anybody know he's faithful? He will not suffer you to be tempted above measure. Uh -huh. He will not suffer you to be tempted above more than you're able. Uh -huh. But with every temptation, yeah. he'll make a way of escape. Uh -huh. And I stop by to tell somebody tonight uh -huh. that you're not the first one to fall. Uh -huh. And according to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, uh -huh. you sure won't be the last. But the Bible tells us that a righteous man fall seven times and he rises uh, up again. Why don't you look over and encourage your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, you may be down, but I'm here to tell you, you're not out. The Bible tells us in Galatians 6 and 1, he said, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, Ye which are spiritual. You've got to be spiritual. He said, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Considering yourself. Lest thou be tempted. My brothers and sisters, I've come to tell you. Your fall may not be my fault. Your temptation may not be my temptation. But one way or another, you will be tempted. The Bible tells us that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So number one, we find 
the place. And then number two, we find the preacher. Paul was a great preacher. And Paul preached his message under the power of the Holy Ghost. And I know that Paul was preaching under the power of the Holy Ghost. Because the devil showed up and tried to interrupt Paul's preaching. And I've come to tell you that whenever the devil shows up, whenever the devil sticks up his ugly head, then you ought to know that what you're doing and what you're saying, it is right. Can I get me a witness in here? So the Bible said that the preacher was preaching. And the Bible said that uh, faith cometh uh, by hearing. And hearing by the word uh, of the Lord. And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless he be sent? And I've come to tell you that uh, when the Lord has called you to preach, you can't go on your own power. You can't go in your name, but you got to go in his name. Can I get me a witness in here? Number one, we find the place. Number two, we find the preaching. But then, number three, we find the purpose. Yeah, Eutychus's fall had a purpose. Can I get me a witness in here? Lean over and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I fell on purpose. I didn't fall just to be fallen. I didn't fall just for the heck of it. But I fell for a purpose. And my purpose was for point number four. And point number four is the power of God. Have I got me a witness here? Yeah. God set Eutychus in that window to make him fall, to show his power. Can I get me a witness in here? Look over and tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I was set up to fall down so that he could bring me back. Can I get me a witness? I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, sinking to run no more. But the master, have I got a witness here, of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted me. Now safe, safe am I. Grab your neighbor by his or her hand and say, neighbor, I fell, but I'm up. I fell, but I'm back. I was down, but I wasn't out. You probably talked about me, but look at me now. You probably talked about me, scandalized my name, but look at me now. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I started from the bottom, and now I'm here. Yeah, I say yes. Number one, we find the place. Number two, we find the preaching. Number three, we find the purpose. And then number four, we find power. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, there is power. One working power in the blood. Yeah, I know it was the blood. Yeah, for it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. 
the blood that give me strength. It will never, I said never, never lose the power. Say yes, the people, they probably thought that Paul's preaching would be Eutychus's eulogy. But tell your neighbor, it wasn't a eulogy. It was a comeback message. It wasn't a goodbye. But it was a hello. It wasn't a farewell. But it was a see you later. And I'm so glad that every day the Lord, he keep on keeping me. Do anybody know him? Has anybody tried him? Won't he walk with you? Won't he talk with you? Won't he make a way? Out of no way, I'm leaving you now. Good evening, Fairfield. Farewell. May the Lord God bless you real good. And may heaven smile upon you. But oh, I'm so glad that Jesus, he picked me up when I fell. He turned, turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. Say yes, I'm leaving you now. But Eutychus fell from three stories. In that right, I fell three years ago. In that right, but I'm reminded of one more three. One Friday evening, have I got a witness? One Friday evening, Jesus, he went to Calvary. Yonder's cross, they hung him high and they stretched him wide. He hung his head, and for me, he died. They put him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there all night Friday, stayed there all day Saturday, stayed there all night Saturday. But three days later, Eutychus fell ha, from three stories. Ha, I fell ha, three years ago. Ha, but Sunday morning, Sunday morning, ha, he got up ha, so Eutychus could get up. Ha, he got up ha, so I could get up ha, with all, all power. Ha, I'll preach to the choir. Ha, said, oh, death, where's that sting? Oh, grave, where's that victory? He looked at my sin. He looked at your sin. And he said, let them go. Let them go. Tell your neighbor. I'm through with y'all. Tell your neighbor. Because he lived. Because he lives. I can face my tomorrow huh? because he lives huh? all huh? my fears are gone huh? yeah huh? I say yes huh? he got up huh? so I could get up huh? he died huh? so I wouldn't die huh? he died huh? I said he died huh? he died <laughs> he died huh? So my fall huh, wouldn't be fatal. Huh? Tell your neighbor, huh? grab him by the hand, huh? rock him and shake him, huh? shake him and rock him. Huh? Tell your neighbor, huh? your fall huh, wasn't fatal. Huh? Your fall huh, didn't kill you. Huh? It made you stronger. Huh? It made you wiser. Huh? It made you better. Huh? Say yeah. Huh? Say yeah. Huh? Do anybody know him? <laughs> 
Has anybody tried him? Did he pick you up out of muck and the mire? Did he turn you around? Did he place your feet on solid ground? I've been up and I've been down, almost level to the ground. But one day, one day, then y'all said, I found him just in time. One day, I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, wounded, and sad. But I found, anybody find it? I found in him a resting place. He has made me glad. My fault wasn't fatal. Let's celebrate. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was dead, but I'm alive. Let's celebrate. Tell your neighbor, we got a reason to celebrate. The devil thought he had me, but God blocked it. The devil said no, but God said yes. Yeah, yes. 